Hi, I'm Dr. Langley. I'm with Pine Ridge Family Medicine here in Colorado Springs. And just this last weekend, I was cutting a lemon with my extra sharp knife. And of course, the, the knife slipped and I cut my finger. And I was bleeding pretty bad and it hurt a lot. Man, sometimes I forget how much it hurts to cut yourself. And I was thinking, does this need stitches? And I, as a medical professional, have a little bit more background and was reflecting on how much making that decision kind of stinks. I mean, going to the ER or urgent care isn't a fun situation. So you really want to be sure that something needs stitches before you go in. So that's what this video is about, is helping you determine what needs stitches and what doesn't. So the idea behind any kind of wound closure, because there's a variety, we're going to be talking about them as well in a little bit, is that there's a couple goals of them. Uh, number one is to avoid infection. The smaller the hole in your skin is, the less likely that bad bacteria will get in there and cause infection. Okay, so that's one reason to consider getting a wound closed. Uh, another is to help it stop bleeding. Sometimes with big gaping wounds, they'll be bleeding a lot. And of course, the first thing that you should do as soon as you cut yourself is hold pressure on it. A good 15 minutes of pressure and sometimes an ice pack uh, will really help decrease the amount of bleeding. So that's always the first thing to be doing. First 15 minutes after you cut yourself, just hang out, lay down, hold some pressure on it. Uh, you have about 24 hours uh, to absolutely get something fixed, uh, repaired medically or not. Uh, and don't worry about getting to the, to the emergency room or urgent care immediately. Take some time, let it stop bleeding, and evaluate things. Okay, so to help it stop bleeding, avoid infection, decrease scarring. If you have a big gaping hole because you scraped a knife across it or something like that, that's going to heal and have a big gaping hole scar. Whereas if, you're, if you need to get uh, it repaired and you bring it together, then you just have a line of a scar instead. So that's a significantly smaller scar. So that's kind of nice. Um, and also, if your injury tends to be in a high tension area, like on the back of your knuckles, let's say, Every time, if you just try to let it heal on its own, every time you flex those fingers and stretch that skin out, that creates a lot of tension across the top of your skin and can make it hard to heal. It seems like every single time you're bending your fingers, that wound is just opening up all over again and then you have the risk of infection and bleeding all over again. So that's another one of the big uh, positives about getting something medically repaired, put back together, no matter how it's done. There are some downsides to stitches or times when uh, stitches are a bad idea. First of all, just like I, I mentioned a little bit ago, if it's been too long, if it's been more than about 24 hours, the skin has already started to heal and built up pink granulation tissue is what it's called. Uh, and after that, start, that process has begun, it's really not going to benefit anything to bring the wound together. It's probably going to heal on its own the way it wants to, no matter how you repair it. Um, so it's better after about 24 hours to just let it heal on its own. Um, if there's no gaping in the wound, then it's an indication that you might not need stitches either. Uh, so what that means is with wounds, sometimes they just come together on their own if they're not that deep, if they're not that big, in which case they're probably going to heal okay by themselves. If you've got a wound though that just is sitting there and it's got a hole in it, if it's gaping open and sometimes you can see some, some white fatty tissue underneath there, that's a good indication that it might need stitches. Um, sometimes if a cut is over a mucous membrane, a common one with kids, for example, is on their lip. If that whole cut, if they banged their tooth against their lip and it caused a cut on their lip, if that cut doesn't go into the skin, at all, then it doesn't need stitches. It's going to heal up on its own really well um, because that mucous membrane, that, that softer area of your lip or inside your mouth tends to heal on its own really, really well. Uh, but if it does cross that line, which is called the vermilion border in uh, medical terms, it does need stitches to make sure that it, it looks right. Otherwise, you can get kind of a, a gap in your lip edge, which looks kind of funny in the future. So getting that repaired is usually recommended by doctors. Um, other wounds that do not get stitches ever are dirty wounds. That includes animal bites or obviously a lot of dirt in there or wounds that are so deep, like deep puncture wounds that you can't get to the bottom and be sure that you're cleaning out whatever grit or glass or whatever's in there. You don't want to take the chance of sewing in that bad bacteria into that wound and making the infection that much worse. So those you actually let heal 
open, no matter how bad they are typically. I mean, talk to your doctor if you're worried about it, but um, dirty wounds generally don't get uh, attached together. Okay, so you've decided you need some kind of medical attention. Um, what's really cool about a lot of doctors these days is they have a variety of ways to numb up the wound so that the stitches or staples don't hurt so much. So it can be the injectable lidocaine, the injectable numbing medicine that does, does tend to burn going in, but it works really fast um, and it works really well. For kids, sometimes I'll do uh, an Emla topical, um, so a kind of a gel that you put on top of the wound and let it sit. That tends to take longer. I mean, maybe, maybe even up to an hour to really soak in and bring some good pain relief. So it's kind of obnoxious to wait an hour, but depending on the kid, it can be the only way that you'll get stitches in them. Um, but uh, no matter what kind of numbing medicine the doctor is using, please make sure that they wait long enough that you're having good pain control. Uh, some doctors will be anxious to get things going and they'll start doing stitches, but if you're feeling those stitches and you had the lidocaine injected, ask the doctor to wait a little bit longer because it can take up to 15 minutes for that medicine to completely kick in, even if it was injected into the area. And uh, if you already suffered through that lidocaine injection, you might as well have good relief for the stitches being placed. But there are other options for uh, wound repair as well. It's not just stitches, is it? So let's see, I've got some examples here. Um, even when it comes to stitches, there's a wide variety of stitches that doctors can work with. Bigger needles and smaller needles, cutting needer, needles versus just pointy needles, um, and different sizes of thread, uh, absorbable versus non-absorbable. Sometimes I get asked why I don't just use absorbable stitches for everything. And... Uh, Absorbable stitches are great for deep wounds where I have to do one closure deep inside and then another closure of just the skin across the top. I, I use the non-absorbable. And this is why I can be really in control of those non-absorbable stitches about when they come out. And they tend to come out cleaner with less scarring. The absorbable sutures, sometimes they come out too early. They get absorbed by your body too fast and the wound isn't ready for them to be removed yet. And then there's nothing I can do. I can't put more stitches in. Or sometimes they take too long, which usually isn't a big deal. I can still usually cut them out. But sometimes that results in some worse scarring than I would have had otherwise. Uh, so that's why I prefer to do the stitches that I have to remove, the non-absorbable stitches on the outside, because I can really be in control of how that heals and make it look perfect. <laughs> um, other options, though, uh, here's a, an example of a skin stapler. It's it's. It's called a stapler. It does look like staples. They're little metal pieces, but they're different than staples in a couple key ways that not every people, everyone understands. So say you've got a piece of skin with a hole in it and you're trying to use staples to hold it together. The staples go into your skin nice and cleanly and make kind of a loop there, kind of like a, a stitch, but it's faster and it's still very strong. And then one of the really cool things is how the device to remove st staples presses down at the top at the same time as bending the two arms up so it comes really smoothly out of your skin. It's really, I think it's a really clever device. Um, so it's, it's not completely painless, but it's, it's really not bad. Um, and that's one of my favorite devices that exist out there. So that's another option. Um, and you've probably also heard of different adhesive glues, um, Dermabond. Uh, some people will even use a super glue, crazy glue for cuts. Um, I can't really say that I recommend that. You never know what kind of bacteria is in those glues. And also those glues tend to dry so fast because they have an exothermic reaction, uh, meaning that they release heat as they dry. That's what makes them dry so quickly and strongly but it can cause burns to your skin. So then not only do you have this deep gash in your skin, but you also have a burn around it. That doesn't sound like much fun to me. So outside of a true emergency, I highly recommend coming in and having uh, at least some Dermabond, if not some other method of skin repair. Um, and then the last uh, real variety out there for repairing skin are those fancy bandages, like butterfly bandages you can get over the counter. These are Steri strips. I don't know if you can see them. If you've ever had surgery, you've already probably had them put in place over the uh, sutures. They're long fabric uh, with a real strong adhesive in there. We like to put a little extra adhesive on there here in our clinic to make sure they stick extra well. 
So those are your options. So how do doctors go about choosing which way of closing a wound? Well, stitches take the longest, but they also tend to look the prettiest. So they're the least scarring of these options. Um, you can really control uh, how they heal. And they also tend to be really strong. So over those, like we were talking about the high tension areas of your body that are constantly getting bent and pulled on, they'll be a good option for withstanding that. Uh, but they are time consuming and hard to place. So not everyone uh, is okay with that, especially in little kids. Another option is staples. Staples tend to have more scarring than stitches, but are fast and easy and are really strong. So that's why they're commonly used for the scalp. Even if you're going to be rubbing on it while you're washing your hair or that kind of thing, they still will withstand that. And the scarring, you don't really worry so much about generally. It's in your hair, it's covered by hair, or, you know, it's just at the top of your head. It's not something that you're going to be looking at every day. Um, so that's okay. Um, the glue and the tape options are really only beneficial in that they're fast and easy, both of them. They're not particularly strong. They're not great with scarring. They're not terrible with scarring either. Um, so they can be good options, especially for less severe injuries to your skin. So that's what I have to say about skin repair today. Thanks for watching. I have another video there about how to know when your stitches need to come out and how to remove the stitches if you're in a place where you can't get to the person who put them in or to otherwise a, a doctor or provider. And then if you wouldn't mind clicking there and subscribing to my channel, I'd appreciate it. Thanks for watching.